Hello everybody, my name is Art Kay. I'm the Linear Applications Engineering Manager at Texas Instruments. My team covers op amps, instrument amps, references, and other linear circuits. I've been working in this field since 1993 and uh, some of my specialties are um, sensor signal conditioning and I'm very interested in noise analysis. Today I'm going to be talking about um, two devices and a system used for calibrating them that uh, works for the bridge sensor calibration. So a bridge sensor uh, can be a pressure sensor, a train, strain gauge, whatever type of sensor, and each and every bridge sensor has its own individual characteristics. The PGA 309 and 308 will take and correct for the non-ideality of these sensors, the non-linearity temperature drift, non-linear temperature drift. It will um, take the millivolt output that is non-linear and convert it to a 0 to 5 volt output um, that's linearized. The PGA 309 does um, all the corrections. Uh, PGA 308 is really a room temperature version of the PGA 309. So the system you can see before you is, uh, starts with the master. Um, the master board uh, is a multiplexer and it connects to uh, the USB DAC platform which is a board that um, generates the digital signal and control signals that controls the multiplexer board. The USB DAC platform is connected to the PC um, which software will run through the calibration. This board over here is a sensor interface board and this is where your sensor modules, your pressure sensors, would connect. So the, um, this board could go into an oven for temperature calibration. Plugged into this board you see uh, several different um, test modules. Here's a test module. It's really just simulating um, a module that you would design using the PGA 309 and 308. There's a sensor emulator portion of this test module. This switch will control a emulated um, sensor minimum output and maximum output. And then these jumpers down here will allow you to configure it in all the different major modes of operation for the PGA 309 and 308. For example, one wire, um, for example, uh, 4 to 20 milliamp, uh, two wire, and three wire voltage output modules. So um, the uh, multiplexer board here will connect to a power supply, connect to a voltmeter, and um, it also connects to the PC software. And the voltage readings from the sensor modules will be, um, will be sent to the voltmeter and the power supply will be sent to the different modules. So I'm going to start the calibration software and what the so software is going to do is it's going to scan through and check to see which units are functional. So let me start that right now. First thing we're doing is acknowledging the uh, different date codes and um, serial numbers and the calibration has started and um, it's scanning through and you can see the LEDs indicating which channel is active. It's scanning through, applying power to each individual channel and testing for functionality. The reason for this functionality test is once we've determined whether the device is good or not, we're going to apply continuous power to all the devices connected to this multiplexer unit. And, uh, and the reason for, for turning off power on the units that are not functional or units that are not connected is that if a unit is shorted out or damaged, you wouldn't want to bring down the entire power supply for the system. Um, for that one unit. So bad units are turned off, good units are turned on, and, um, and after they're turned on there's a soak period where you can apply power to each one of the sensor modules for as long as you need so that the uh, sensor module can fully stabilize. So this is an adjustable time period and uh, I'm going to adjust the pressure switch to minimum pressure and I'm going to continue the calibration. So we're continuing the calibration, um, at min minimum stimulus pressure applied, and um, you can see the meter here is reading the output of these sensor modules and back calculating the input signal from the pressure sensor. It's measuring the millivolts that the pressure sensor is through the sensor electronics. We're still calibrating these sensors, and as it goes through this calibration, um, we will see the, um, the output of the sensor. 
it's finished the first part of the calibration, which is com computing the uh, minimum output of the sensor. And now we want to apply maximum pressure and continue. So the first thing we do in the maximum pressure um, state is figure out the maximum output of the sensor module. We're then going to um, take the maximum and minimum output of the sensor module and use that to compute the gain and offset corrections required to get 0.5 to 4.5 volts out for the PGA308, which is what this calibration is. I should also mention that um, this system can be expanded to uh, 64 channels and uh, the, in this case we have an 8 channel system shown. So um, you can stack boards on the multiplexer to expand it up to 64 channels. So after uh, the first portion of this calibration is done, we're now working on adjusting the output to 4.5 and you should see this volt meter um, read 4.5 when that calibration is fully complete. So, indeed, the first sensor calibrated to 4.5, and the accuracy in this case shows 0.000%. So, um, it was perfectly calibrated, at least to the resolution of the software. So, now that the uh, high pressure calibration is fully complete, we're going to adjust the sensor back to low pressure, and we're going to calibrate the output to 0.5 volts. So it's going to measure the sensor, adjust, and calibrate. When this uh, part, portion of the calibration is complete, the PGA-308 uh, will be fully calibrated, and one last step will be to do a verification of the high pressure output, which should be 4.5. At that point, we can then write um, the information into the EEPROM or into the OTP, as is the case for the PGA-308, and program the module, and it'll be a standalone electronics module. So we've fully calibrated the system, and now we're just going to do a verification. And we're finishing the verification at this point. So the, the first module is uh, very accurate. Um, 0.005% and 0.002%. That's quite typical of the PGA 308 and 309. Um, the calibration total accuracy is usually dependent more on the sensor itself and not so much on the sensor electronics. So the calibration is fully complete. Um, so you can see that they were uh, fairly accurate post-calibration error. I uh, thank you for your time. I uh, would like to point you towards the TI website for further information on the PGA 308 and 309. Thank you.